closing arguments. Following the closing arguments by the attorneys, the court will conclude with the final instructions. After the instructions are given, you will then retire to consider your verdict. You should not form any definite or fixed opinion on the merits of the case until you have heard all the evidence, the arguments of the lawyers, and the instructions on the law by the judge. Until that time, you should not discuss the case among yourselves. Your verdict must be based solely on the evidence or lack of evidence and the law. I now instruct you not to communicate with anyone, including your fellow jurors, about this case. No communication includes no emailing, text messaging, tweeting, blogging, or any other form of communication. You cannot do any research about the case or look up any information about the case. If you become aware of any violation of any of these rules at all, notify court personnel of the violation. During the course of the trial, the court may take recesses and... Um, sorry. During the course of the trial, the court may take recesses. During these recesses, you must not discuss the case with anyone nor permit anyone to say anything to you or in your presence about the case. If anyone attempts to say anything to you or in your presence about this case, tell him or her that you're on the jury trying the case and ask that person to stop. If he or she persists, leave him or her at once immediately. Report the matter to the court deputy who will advise me. You cannot have any cell phones, tablets, laptops, or other electronic devices in the courtroom. You may use these devices during recess, but even then you may not use your cell phone or electronic device to find out any information about the case or communicate with anyone about the case or the people involved in the case. Do not take photographs, video recordings, or audio recordings of the proceedings or your fellow jurors. At the end of the case, while you are deliberating, you must not communicate with anyone outside the jury room. If someone needs to contact you in an emergency, the court can receive messages and deliver them to you without delay. A contact phone number will be provided to you. The case must be tried by you only on the evidence presented during the trial in your presence and in the presence of the defendant, the attorneys, and the judge. Jurors must not conduct any investigation of their own. This includes reading newspapers, watching television, or using a computer, cell phone, the internet, any electronic device, or any other means at all to get information related to this case or the people and places involved in this case. This applies whether you are in the courthouse, at home, or anywhere else. You must not visit places mentioned in the trial or use the internet to look at maps or pictures to see any place discussed during the trial. Jurors must not have discussions of any sort with friends or family members about the case or the people and places involved. So do not let even the closest family members make comments to you or ask questions about the trial. In this age of electronic communication, I want to stress again that just as you must not talk about this case face to face, you must not talk about this case using an electronic device. You must not use phones, computers, or other electronic devices to communicate. Do not send or accept any messages related to this case or your jury service. Do not discuss this case or ask for advice by any means at all, including posting information on an internet website, chat room, or blog. What are the reasons for these rules? These rules are imposed because jurors must decide the case without distraction and only on the evidence presented in the courtroom. If you investigate, research, or make inquiries on your own, the trial judge has no way to make sure that the information you obtain is proper for the case. The parties likewise have no opportunity to dispute or challenge the accuracy of what you find. That is contrary to our judicial system, which assures every party the right to ask questions about and challenge the evidence being considered against it and to present argument with respect to that evidence. Any independent investigation by a juror unfairly and improperly prevents the parties from having that opportunity our judicial, judicial system promises. Any juror who violates these restrictions jeopardizes the fairness of these proceedings and a mistrial could result that would require the entire trial process to start over. A mistrial is a tremendous expense and inconvenience to the parties, the court, and the taxpayers. 
If you violate these rules, you may be held in contempt of court and face sanctions such as serving time in jail, paying a fine, or both. The attorneys are trained in the rules of evidence and trial procedure, and it is their duty to make all objections they feel are proper. When an objection is made, you should not speculate on the reason why it is made. Likewise, when an objection is sustained or upheld by me, you must not speculate on what might have occurred had the objection not been sustained, nor what, what a witness might have said had he or she been permitted to answer. During the trial, it may be necessary to confer with the attorneys out of your hearing to discuss matters that require consideration by me alone. It is impossible to predict when such conference may be required or how long it will last. When such conferences occur, they will be conducted so as to consume as little of your time as is necessary for a fair and orderly trial of the case. If you would like to take notes during the trial, you may do so. On the other hand, you are not required to take notes if you don't want to. It's left up to you individually. You've been provided with a notepad and pen for your use if you want to take notes. Any notes that you take are for your personal use. However, you should not take them with you from the courtroom. Uh, during recesses, leave your notes on the chairs. At night, they'll be collected and stored safely. No one's going to read your notes. After you've completed your deliberations, the court deputy will deliver your notes to me and they will be, re they will be destroyed. If you take notes, do not get so involved in note taking that you become distracted from the proceedings. Your notes should be used only as aids to your memory. Whether or not you take notes, you should rely on your memory of the evidence and you should not be unduly influenced by the notes of other jurors. Notes are not entitled to any greater weight than each juror's memory of the evidence. Um, during the opening, you're about to view or listen to an audio or video recording. The court instructs you that the recording has been edited to eliminate irrelevant portions that would not add to your understanding of the case. The fact that a recording has been edited should not concern you in any way and must not impact the way you view or listen to and consider this.